Hey everyone, Scott here. I am in my living room. It is late on Saturday night, basically the only time I could find where I wasn't going to be interrupted with noise. Uh, but I'm here and hopefully uh, going to bring some encouragement to you. Uh, and so, so grateful for Peter Mogan's words last week. Um, and they're up on the podcast if you haven't heard. Uh, and we're going to sh- continue to bring these short, more bite sized type reflections, encouragements during this time. And uh, yeah, hopefully they'll bless you and uh, build you up in this time. Um, Well, as most of you may or may not know, my title with Artisan Church is the Pastor of Community Formation. Uh, As you can imagine, this time brings some challenges to this role and to community formation as a whole, but also some unique opportunities and uh, I just wanted to share a few because I've just been blown away of uh, the creativity, the ingenuity, the courageousness, or courage, I guess you could say, of some of the people in our community. Uh, for instance, John Voth uh, reading Harry Potter at 6 p.m. Uh, or I heard Whitney Shire and her roommates organized an online talent sh- show that happened, uh, I think it's happening right now. Dylan Adams reading kids' books at 5 p.m. on Instagram Live. Um, I heard there was a rumor that Dice Squires performed a three-part musical drama for her friends in quarantine, and she's starting a YouTube channel, so it's amazing. Uh, Jordan Clausen did a couple of online concerts. He's taken live requests. Jenny attempted her first Facebook Live worship night. There was a few glitches, and I think we only got the first song from her, but Hoping we can try that again. Um, I've heard so many stories, people organizing Zoom calls with people to do the Sunday liturgy with, uh, neighborhood groups meeting online for check-ins and prayer. Uh, We've had a lot of help from people submitting um, people of artisan posts. If you haven't seen these, check them out. You can see them on Facebook and Instagram. Just stories of people in our community and how they're affected by COVID and how we can pray for them and people like them. And uh, I just got to say, while all all these measures, they're not perfect, um, they're just temporary, but they are something and they are helping people connect in a potentially lonely and isolating time. Um, So I wanted to bring you some encouragement from scripture, but first here's a quote. Sadhu Sundar Singh, an early 20th century Indian missionary wrote this, a silkworm was struggling out of the cocoon, and an ignorant man saw it battling as if in pain. So he went and helped it to get free. But very soon after, it fluttered and died. The other silkworms that struggled out without help suffered, but they came out into full life and beauty, with wings made strong for flight by their battle for fresh existence. Oh, I love that. And I think the cocoon metaphor is really appropriate right now. A lot of us feeling cooped up in our homes or our places where we live. Claustrophobic from our roommates, already annoyed with our kids, our family. Uh, And some of us experiencing heightened loneliness and isolation and lack of physical touch and human connection. But as the quote suggests, what if this time was actually an opportunity for growth and strengthening? Um, I know it's hard, and it, this time is uh, potentially harder for some more than others. And I'm not discounting that, but I just want to bring a perspective and ask, what if we could experience growth and strengthening during this time? And I want to look to Acts chapter 9, verse 31. If you have it with you, open up or follow along. And uh, before I read it, just want to say how uh, we as a church have been going through the book of Acts. And so uh, I was actually scheduled two weeks ago to preach on this verse and the surrounding verses, and obviously things changed. Uh, But there's some things I'm really drawn to in this verse, and so I wanted to bring it to you today, and that's Acts 9.31. And this is one of Luke's great summary statements in Acts. It goes like this, verse 31, chapter 9. Then the church throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria enjoyed a time of peace. 
and was strengthened. Living in the fear of the Lord and encouraged by the Holy Spirit, it increased in numbers. Sounds nice, hey? Enjoying a time of peace. Uh, I'm feeling personally drawn to this verse, I think, because I long for some version of this in the life of our community. I long for it in uh, our world right now, for that peace to be in our world. I long for peace for those who are lonely. I long for peace for those who suffer with mental health and can't seem to beat it. And especially during this time, they uh, increase and the weight becomes more for people who hold huge weights from financial stress and obviously the added stress from job loss or layoffs due to COVID-19. Um, and I hope, yeah, we can be encouraged that the church was also in a tight spot. They were experiencing, as you know, um, major opposition, people who were against the church and what it stood for. And it was a threat to the leaders of the day. So there's tons of pushback, persecution, death, people being drawn out of homes, all of it you can read before chapter nine. Uh, but Luke in the summary verse describes five things about the early church and uh, it's my prayer this morning that we can enjoy these things today. Uh, one is peace. Two is strength. Three is living in the fear or awe of the Lord. Four is encouragement or comfort. And five is growth. Uh, first, peace. It says that they enjoyed a time of peace. And I just wanted to ask the question to you right now. Where are you finding peace amidst all the noise and the news and social media that's relentless? Where are you finding peace? I was talking with a friend about this and how we waffle back and forth between feeling gratitude for technology right now, but also just being incredibly overwhelmed with all the options and different ways to connect. I mean, it's crazy the amount of stuff coming at us right now announcements every day. It's changing daily, hourly. And some helpful things for me, maybe you found some really helpful things to draw peace from. Um, one has been uh, Hillary McBride's meditation and self-care during COVID-19. Uh, there was a piece she did with Sanctuary Mental Health, and it's on their website. The link is in the Community Life email. Uh, it's just a short meditation. She walks you through a breathing exercise, grounding yourself. So helpful. Um, something else, too, that's been really helpful for me is John Mark Comer. He's a pastor in Portland. Uh, it's a podcast called The Bridgetown Daily, and he's just been bringing some really short six, seven minutes um, encouragements and thoughts and prayer. And uh, that's been really grounding for me in almost a daily routine right now. Uh, so commend those to you, but also just reminded through that that uh, – True peace truly comes from Christ. He cuts through the noise. Like Philippians 4, I'll read it for you. It says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Second is strength. Uh, it says in Acts uh, 9.31 that they were strengthened. The early church was strengthened. And this is uh, this word, I think, fails us a bit in the English, but the Greek word is really a building metaphor. And maybe an image we're all familiar with in Vancouver, seeing buildings being restored. And when you see these pictures of these, these buildings being restored, there's supports and scaffolding, scaffolding surrounding it in order to bring it strength and stability, and it's the same thing here. The church was experiencing this. And uh, Colossians 2, such a great verse, using this word built up. And I'm gonna pray it for you today, that uh, Paul says, so then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith, as you were taught and overflowing with thanksgiving. Um, the third one is the fear of the Lord. It says they were living in the fear of the Lord. 
this is always a bit of a weird concept, kind of tricky to interpret. What does it mean to have the fear of the Lord? I like what Eugene Peterson writes in the message. He says that they were permeated with a deep sense of reverence for God. Another word for that is awe. And I think simply what it means is living in that awe of God and who he is. I am reminded of my Nana. She is a spicy Norwegian in her late 80s. And if you know my Nana, she's a talker, but she's also a prayer. And it's not uncommon to come over to Nana's house and to see her washing the dishes, roaming around the house, puttering around, praying out loud. And she'll do things like, literally, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Oh, bless you, Nana, bless you. And she'll just live in this mode of awe of God for who God is. And it's actually inspiring. Um, my Nana has some other downfalls, but uh, this is not one of them. And I'm encouraged by her. I'm encouraged by these words from Acts to not let the noise of the news and social media overcome us, but to make some noise of our own, a joyful noise, prayers, worship. Fill your house with that kind of noise. Um, fourth, Paul says uh, they were encouraged by the Holy Spirit, or some translations say comforted. The word for this action of the Holy Spirit is paraklesis, and it's probably one of my favorite Greek words. It comes from the root paraklete, which literally means the one who comes alongside. It's this beautiful picture of God not being a distant deity, but one who comes alongside us and has shown us that in Jesus Christ. And Jesus sent his spirit to be with us, to guide us, to comfort us. Then finally, growth. The early church came out of suffering and opposition and miraculously it grew. Uh, my prayer is that we may know this type of growth too, that we, even in these strange days, may experience his peace and his strength, that we would walk in the fear or the awe of the Lord, that we would experience the comfort of the paraclete, the one who comes alongside, and that we would, by God's grace, continue to grow. Let's pray, and we'll close our time together here. God, in these uncertain times, um, we come to you. We lay our burdens at your feet. We welcome your spirit, and we breathe in your peace in our body, our mind, our souls. Lord, would you bless us with your peace? Would you surround us right now, surround each one, listening to these words, surround our community, our church, surround our neighborhoods, our city, our world. God, would you bring peace and wholeness? We pray the only thing and the best thing we can pray is uh, come, Holy Spirit, come. I'm going to leave you with this benediction from Romans 15, verse 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks for listening. Peace.